Today in Nanome, we're going to be talking about one of the three main types of protein degrader molecules. A 2020 Nature Chemical Biology paper by Dunbuston and Lipford describes the three main types. First are the protex, or proteolysis targeting chimeras. Second are the monovalent degraders. And third are the molecular glue degraders. Protex consists of a degradation target specific ligand linked to a ligand for a ubiquitin ligase, such as the compound Arvinus 771, which consists of an R-hydroxyproline moiety, specific for VHLE3 ligase, connected to a triazolodiazepine acetamide, specific for bromodomain and extraterminal domain, or BET, implicated in lymphoma. Protex are large molecules, however, and suffer from ADME and drug delivery limitations. By contrast, monovalent degraders and molecular glues are small molecules that exhibit more traditional drug-like properties. Our focus today is on molecular glues, of which the previously known drug thalidomide, shown here, is a well-known well example. example. Thalidomide had a tarnished history, however, in the early 1960s as a severe teratogen until its redemption in 2006 as an approved immunomodulatory drug, or IMID, for multiple myeloma. Molecular glues work by inducing an atypical interaction between a target protein of interest and a substrate receptor of an E3 ubiquitin ligase, resulting in degradation of the target. Figure 1b of the Lipford article shows a cartoon representation of a prototypical ligase complex where cul4, or cullin4, is the ligase and associates with DDB1, or DNA damage binding protein, which consists of three beta propeller subunits, BPA, BPB, and and BPC, which further associate with the decaf, DDB1 and cul 4 associated factor, or cerebellin in this case, that then recruits the target substrate for ubiquitin elation, followed by subsequent degradation. We'll now investigate the X-ray structure PDBID 4CI1 in the first entry in the table, which was published in Nature by Tama and colleagues in 2014 of thalidomide in complex with DDB1 CRBN E3 ubiquitin ligase and its implications for further molecular glue designs. The three propellers of DDB1 are represented in purple for BPB up at the top, red for BPA, and gold for BPC, reflecting the color scheme in this figure from the Nature paper. The C-terminal helix bundle is represented in gray which you can kind of see in the back in the 2D image. The decaf in this case is cerebellin, which is further subdivided into three domains colored cyan for the central seven helix bundle, blue for the seven stranded beta sheet and terminus, and green for the eight beta sheet C terminus that also contains a zinc coordination site as well as the thalidomide binding site shown in white here. And now we'll expand this binding site a bit and take a look at the interactions a bit more closely. So first, I'm going to use Nanom Select tool to select the ligand, and then Nanom's Modify tool to calculate the hydrogen bonds in the binding pocket. You can also use Nanom's Measure tool to measure hydrogen, bo hydrogen bonds of interest, for example, between this carbonyl and histidine, histidine 380 at 2.9 angstroms, which looks like a pretty good hydrogen bond to me. Taking a look at this 2D schematic of thalidomide, uh, it's broken up into a glutaramid ring, which forms most of the contacts with cerebellin, and a thaloweal ring. So taking a look at the glutaramid binding site, we see that it's held in place between two beta sheets and hydrogen bonds are formed between the carbonyls and tryptophan 382, which I've represented in yellow, and the aminin H with the histidine 380, which we pointed out earlier. The hydrophobic side of the glutaramid sits in a pocket formed by the tryptophan 382, tryptophan 388, and tryptophan 402 also known as the tri-tryptophan pocket. The thalamid moiety of thalidomide contacts this histidine 359 up here in the front via this water molecule and forms a hydrophobic interaction with proline 354. I'm going to select the ligand here and let's do a 
a binding site surface representation using Nanom's select tool and display tool. So here you can see a surface representation of the binding pocket where polar uh, interactions are represented in blue and red and the hydrophobic interactions are in gray. Thalidomide has two other related analogs, lenalidomide and pomalinamide. Nanom allows me to highlight the differences between them. There's an amine present at C4 of the thalloyl group in both of those structures. So next, we are going to take a look at PDB4CI2, which is of lenalinamide and published by the same group in the same paper. And here we can look at that C4 amine in the pocket, select it there. And you can see that that amine is solvent exposed. The C4 amine of lenalinamide and pomalinamide is thought to be responsible for recruitment of the degradation protein target, the transcription factor Icaros, or IKZF1, for which thalidomide is less efficient. The imids are also thought to block recruitment of the endogenous substrate, the transcription factor MEIS2. I should also mention that the three molecules display similar affinity for cerebron, with KDs of 250 nanomolar for thalidomide, 178 nanomolar for lenalidomide, and 157 nanomolar for pomalinamide. Mutations that abrogate binding of all imids are the tyrosine 368 to alanine, which in this binding pocket I've highlighted in purple in the back. And also, perhaps more apparently, the tryptophan 388 will also abrogate binding. So on this last uh, figure for the uh, 2014 Nature paper, I just wanted to highlight um, these cartoon representations where they describe the binding of thalidomide with cerebron versus lenalidomide or pomalinamide, which have that amine protruding to the solvent. And you can see that these compounds may interfere with uh, endogenous substrate binding, and that that amine is thought to be responsible for recruitment of the transcription factor Icaros that ends up getting degraded. So now we're going to take a look at our last X-ray structure, also by the same group, but in published in Science in 2018. And this is of pomalinamide with cerebron and DDB1, but also in complex with a zinc finger binding motif of Icaros. The C4 amine of pomalinamide forms a water-mediated hydrogen bond with glutamate, glutamine 146, which I've highlighted in green, but we'll select. And here's the water molecule, and there's the amine. Maybe I can try to measure it. Mutation of this residue, the glutamine 146 to isoleucine equalizes the binding affinity across the three compounds. Additionally, the beta hairpin glycine, the glycine 151 in the zinc finger, which I highlighted in green, acts against the thalamid ring of pomalinamide. In contrast to the structures of thalidomide and lenalidomide with CRBN unassociated with a target substrate, the molecular glue structure of pomalinamide sandwiched between cerebron and IKZF1 zinc finger 2 is in an open conformation with its N and C terminal domains separated and stabilized by crystal contacts. So let's move this back into a sort of a smaller orientation. And yeah, you can see that the N terminal region and the C terminal region are separated. You can see that in a more pronounced fashion if I align them with the previous structures. So even though this is a bit busy, you can see how the C-terminus containing pomalinamide uh, in complex with the zinc finger is in a completely different orientation than that for lenalidomide and thalidomide. So I'm going to turn those off now. Just going back to the pomalinamide structure. The authors conclude that analysis of the pomalinamide crystal structure implies that the different thalidomide analogs interact with key residues 146, 148, and 153 with varying specificity. So let's take a look at those. So 146 is on the zinc finger, as is 153 and 148. 
Therefore, new anim analogs may be designed to impart specificity and improved affinity for targeting other zinc fingers previously considered undruggable to promote their degradation with potential therapeutic benefits. Thank you for joining me in Nanome today.